Um, what we're going to do is I hope everybody um, is going to have fun today because that's basically what I would like to see accomplished. Um, if you do have any kind of questions, um, please like hold them um, to the end. So we'll kind of keep about you know five ten minutes. I'm going to probably end this. Oh, probably about five to one because I'm going to facilitate a support, uh, support group at that time. So we might be ending like maybe five minutes early if everybody doesn't mind. Um, so let's kind of begin. First of all, I really do think it is important to find ways to have quality time together. You do want to be staying connected, engaged, and really active even in the face of some memory decline. That's, I think, really, really important. And I think what you want to do is you want to try to make it enjoyable for both you and the person who has some of the memory changes. So what you want to really focus on is you want to select and modify activities depending on, I think, three things. An individual's interest. What do they like to do before? What do they like to do? What were they doing when they were working? Any activity that you think that they had before, a lot of times that's going to be something that's going to be uh, needed to really take into consideration. Second of all, something going on? OK. All right. We're pretty flexible. Second of all, any physical limitations. Does somebody you know, have difficulty in terms of their hearing? Do they have difficulty in their sight? What about their mobility? Um, so all these things would be what I would go under physical limitations. And then you have the cognitive changes, where sometimes people are having memory problems, problems in understanding, problems in language. So again, when you're looking at some of the examples and some of the ways and the activities that I really have kind of tried to bring together, please keep that in mind. And be flexible and creative. And we'll see how we can really make some of the things that even that you see, maybe really kind of modify them as time goes on. One of the things that I look at is in terms of is, let's see, OK, what happened to we missing a slide? That's not good. All right. Helpful um, guidelines. I, want, I think that you should choose activities that you find both you and the person that with memory changes finds enjoyable. Ensure activities are really voluntary. Doing what you um, really think that you both will really enjoy. Have a care partner, um, let's see, initiate the activity. And why do I say that? OK, I say that because sometimes someone with memory problems, and I will say most times with memory problems, does not initiate that activity. You know, so what you have to do is instead of waiting for someone to do it, you have to really try to do it um, in terms of initiate it yourself. Keep activities relatively short. And use even simple things as activities. Things that would be, um, and we'll talk about it later in terms of under home activities. So anything can be considered an activity. And this is going to be the hardest for everybody. Remember, it's the activity itself that is important, OK? It is not how well it's done. So it's the, just think of it, it's the process and the activity. Now we can go to the types of activities. So this is what I'm going to try to be covering today. Games and mental workouts, arts and crafts, music, exercise, home activities, community activities, and reminiscing. And we're going to go into more detail with each of those things. Um, some of them I'm going to be spending more time with. And others I'm really not going to be spending a lot of time with because you probably have heard them in other Lunch and Learns, um, specifically some of the art kinds of things and in terms of some of the exercise. But we will touch upon everything. OK. So dominoes, every, no people know what dominoes are. Famous names, we're going to get to that because that's going to be an activity that maybe we're going to try to do together here. Hangman is another game, jigsaw puzzles. Letter cancellation and sample slogans I'm going to get back to. Sudoku um, in terms of with numbers. And I don't know if everybody realizes it, but you don't have to have the grid with nine numbers. You can have simpler ones that have six numbers involved. So again, that's adapting to where um, someone who has some memory changes. Verbal fluency and the word search. So let's kind of look at what famous names. What do I mean by that? 
It is a cognitive activity for memory and language. You choose a popular first name, and then you identify a famous last name that goes with it, and then initiate conversation. So I'm going to look at this one right here of George. George, the first thing that comes to mind is George Washington. So then I'm going to think, OK, well, George Washington, he was the first president of the US, right? He um, is on a dollar bill, OK? Go look, he really is on a dollar bill. Um, he was married, let's say, to Martha. And um, then I found, then I was getting really interested, and you can be discussing and talking with someone, is did everybody know in terms of like uh, he cut down his, supposedly his father's cherry tree and said, you know, I'm not going to tell a lie, which then everybody used for like a moral lesson. But something else I learned today, because when I was trying to look for it, is, you know, I've always been told he had wooden teeth. Guess what? He did not, OK? Uh, his teeth, he used to basically, uh, for a lot of his, and I guess they had to be replaced a number of times, he used some of, um, I think, some of his slaves' teeth. OK, that would buy. And then later on, when he was in the White House, I learned he used teeth from a hippopotamus and a um, elephant. Did you guys know that? OK, so that's when you start talking about something with somebody that you really are, um, you know, in terms of trying, who even have some memory problems, you start talking. So you throw out this name, George. You come up with Washington. You start discussing it. Maybe you'll even go to an internet and do it. And then the next thing that I would follow through is, um, is there another famous person whose name starts with George? OK, OK, we got Clooney. Who else? George Burns, George Bush, and then what you can do, yes, George Bush twice, and what you can do is you can basically kind of build and really have this, you know, in terms of really a very fun activity going on and carry it as long as you want. So that's when I think of famous names. Um, the next thing that I wanted to tell you about is what is uh, something that is probably an attention task that you can do with someone who does have memory changes. You can make it as easy as you want. You can take a paragraph out of, let's say, a book, out of the newspaper. I made this paragraph up. And what you do is you go through the paragraph below, and every time you see a certain letter, I want you to cross it off. So I want everybody to try to cross off the eyes right now. I'm going to give everybody one minute, and I want you to tell me how many eyes you see. It should be on your paper, unless you can, um, and we'll see it up here. Whoops, that was the answers. You don't want the answers yet. OK? All right. OK? So I'm giving you a minute to try to figure out how many eyes that you see. OK? How we doing? OK? OK, has everybody done with the paragraph? OK, what, what's the count? OK, we got 24. I heard 25, 26. 27? OK. All right. I counted, and I'm going to put this on. I counted 26. OK? I tried. So I might have forgotten one, OK? But this is where I found them. So see if that works for you. And again, what did I forget? I and it. OK. All right. Good job, guys. OK, so that you have better attention than I do. But think about, wouldn't this be kind of like a fun kind of activity for someone? You pick any kind of letter. You can make it very short. If somebody really does have a lot of memory problems and a lot of cognitive difficulties, make it two sentences, OK? But this is a something, you know, because you always want to find things to do. All right? OK, now. Um, the next one I wanted to do, and we can kind of do this, is some verbal fluency exercises. Verbal fluency is really a cognitive stimulating word activity that can be very fun. 
Now, there's many ways of doing it, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of the examples. So some examples would include, name as many words that begin with a certain letter of the alphabet, okay? Um, and you can name all the words, for example, that you can think of that begin with a B. Now, what I'm going to do is usually, you know, you always kind of get people in the front. So in the very back row, I want you to kind of come up with things that begin with a B. Baby. Baby. Beach ball. Beach ball. Bin. Bin. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. So th do you see what I'm saying? So that you as an activity can kind of just check any kind of letter and do that. That's called letter fluency. The next thing is what would be name as many words that belong to a certain category. So that's a category fluency. So name all the words that you can think of that are round. OK, we're going to start with Jasmine, round. R round. Well, you, she said a wheel. Okay, you got to come up. Anybody else? Can you help them? Right. Okay. So do you see how this? So this could be also be a different kind of game that you could play together. Now the third thing would be is name as many words that belong with a certain letter and a specific category. I will tell you that um, in the past I have facilitated groups of those who have some mild, what they call mild dementia or mild cognitive impairment, people who are starting to have certain memory problems, but they're very, very high functioning. What I came up with, and this is kind of like where the creativity is I had two piles. I had a pile that had all the letters, and I had a pile that had categories. And someone would pick a card from each, and then put it together, and had to try to find a word that would begin with a certain letter and have a specific category. So for example, I would have somebody, let's say, name words, and think about this, that can begin with M and our fruits. Can anybody think of something that begins with M that are fruits? Mango. Mango. Melon. 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 Very good. Mushroom. That can talk, yeah. Melon. Mushroom is a vegetable, but that's close. But see, so this is kind of some of the different things that you might want to do. Now, I'm going to also get, share with you, if we went back a couple, and one of the things, there was also something that was called sample slogans. Now. I don't know about you, but sample slogans are something that, OK, um, people do identify with slogans, OK? I, I think that everybody in this audience does. Now think about it. It really can be something that could be used in terms of for language, for in terms of some of the kind of interaction that you have with each other, and also in terms of memory. I'm going to throw out in terms of and have you figure out what some slogans you know, are. OK, let's go see if anybody can remember these, some of these things. OK, and maybe raise your hand so everybody can do it, and I'll call on you or point to you. Have it your, um, have it your um, own way. Have it your way. Yes? Burger King. Burger King. Very good. OK, how about this one? Keeps going and going and going. Yes. What? OK, it's the Energizer. Energizer, OK. How about this one? Better ingredients, better pizza? Papa John's, OK. Um, you're in good hands with? Allstate. Um, and um, I'm loving it. McDonald's. OK. Oh, uh, this, one I, this one is something that might be a little ha uh, harder for people. Think small. Think small. Anybody ever hear that one? Oh, see, I'm catching y'all. That's not Apple. Think small. Volkswagen. Oh. All right. Now, if this, so again, an activity, you might find there's a whole bunch of slogans on the internet that um, you can kind of just kind of Google sample slogans. And again, don't, don't you think this could be fun? OK. Something different. All right, so let's kind of move on. All right, here we go. Now, the next thing is card games. Many, many people enjoy card games. I've listed some of the card games, Blackjack, which is 21, Go Fish, Crazy Eights, where you try to match suits or numbers, or you get um, eights that are, you know, in terms of going to be wild, gin or gin rummy, old maid. Now, these last two, are something I came across, and I'm not sure people are really familiar with. 
Um, this, the next one is going to be like a memory card game. So if you look here, how you really want to play it is you initially want to deal three or four cards. You want to scan them, turn the cards face down, and depending on where someone is, you want to either try to recall numbers, suits, or both numbers and suits. Now I'm going to go back, okay, without looking at your sheets, what were those cards? Okay, now, okay, we'll go look. Okay. Four of hearts, king of clubs, ten of spades, and nine of diamonds. Now, what you can start out with is usually three or four cards. If this becomes too difficult for someone, then what you want to do is bring it back a card and use three cards. If this is too easy for someone, then you can add more cards and go to six cards and eight cards. Again, another way of adapting this game is to say, Okay, you don't need to know in terms of the suits and the numbers. Maybe just tell me what the numbers are, or may the suits are. Okay, so this is something that you guys can do together with someone who has memory uh, challenges. Use the place of concentration. That would, that's what the other next one is, okay? That's the matching card game is concentration. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with it, is you put down some cards, and then you turn over two cards, and you try to match the pairs. One of the things that I would suggest is you don't put down the whole deck. Okay? If someone has memory problems, that's not a good thing to do. Okay? But start out with, like, let's say 12 cards. Okay? And then try to see how they're matching. You can always add more cards. Now, another way of doing matching cards for people who are having more problems is to not have those cards face down, which would be like more of a memory game, but instead to have them face up and then you can have an attention game. So you can have the pairs there and they just have to choose the pairs. So you're not necessarily tapping into some memory issues, okay, if it's going to be too difficult and then it's going to lead to frustration, which is not what you want with any of the activities, but what is still going to be an enjoyable. So you can adapt it and change it. Now, arts and crafts. Arts and crafts bring enjoyment, increase self-esteem, and tap memory, creativity, motor skills, and hand-eye coordination. There are several types of activities. Now, Susan talked about some art classes here and art appreciation classes here, but you can also look to see if you can even get some more art classes at, let's say, through Park and Rec, through, um, I'm thinking of Michael's, Joanne Fabrics, that's crafts, from Oli, if anybody, um, in terms of that's that, um, Outreach Lifelong Learning Institute at UNLV. So a lot of times taking a class can be something that can be very rewarding for both you and someone who you are caregiving for. Uh, visit a craft show, walking up and down. What I would recommend if you're doing a craft show is try not to go when it's most crowded, okay? Try not to do it on a Sunday, maybe at like 10 o'clock when you have everybody coming in. Because a lot of times, too many people is going to make this not necessarily a very enjoyable outing. Draw, paint, knit, crochet, build. I'm going to also add color because there's a lot of coloring books that are for adults. Some of them are pretty hard. So you might want to not necessarily, somebody might not really gravitate to some of the harder ones. But think about that people in terms of coloring. It could be something that could be very, very uh, rewarding. Um, I want to share with you now, and this, um, I, let's see, I don't know if you can kind of see this in terms of the other places, but this was a calendar, okay? Um, that was given to me, and these are, pictures are done, okay, by people who do have some memory difficulties. So, and they're beautiful. I mean, there's some really very interesting artwork that you will certainly find. Um, play with Play-Doh. Why would I say play with Play-Doh? Because it's a tactile kind of thing in the texture. The one thing I would warn is please make sure somebody's not going to eat the Play-Doh. Okay? Um, again, very familiar things people are is making a family history scrapbook or creating a collage. What about music? I think music can really stimulate memory. It can enhance verbal skills and bring a lot of joy and happiness. I have personally seen, and this to me is amazing, I don't know how to explain it, 
But I have seen people who really are having language difficulty in terms of their expressive language. They cannot get the words out. You ask them to sing, and the words come out. OK? It's made. Um, throughout the process, people who might have moderate dementia, they might not really remember things, but they're going to be remembering songs to words. And so you hear them singing the words. And even people who have severe dementia, they might be in terms of smiling when they hear some of the music, tapping their hands. I mean, it is a very wonderful, wonderful phenomena that you've seen. How do you incorporate music into everyday life? Singing together? dancing together, and then you have the intimacy with each other. Playing an instrument. When I think about this, I don't know if um, anybody here saw the documentary on Don Campbell. OK. Yeah, Glenn Campbell, see? OK. Um, but he was still playing, wasn't he? And he really, you saw a lot of signs of some memory impairment, and he was still playing, and playing well. So I think that a lot of times, that's long-term memory that really stays with you. Watching musicals on video, um, I certainly like the sound of music. I mean, maybe that you know, kind of dates me, but that's something that's very, very enjoyable. Listening to music on the radio, television, internet, CDs, or DVDs. So you can have music. You can find it in a lot of different places. What is also really interesting is find your favorite music or find the favorite music of somebody who does have some memory challenges and put it on an iPad or an iPod. Create an old CD, their own CD, so they can listen to it. And maybe when they're listening to it is some of the agitation that sometimes people will feel is goes away. And go to concerts. And especially when I'm thinking of is some outdoor concerts where if you have to leave, it's OK. I would also, in terms of, for me, with seating, try to get an end seat so that you can kind of get out. You don't want to be like in the very, very front row. So again, that would be trying to adapt. <coughs> Physical activity and exercise, OK? How many times have you heard here from doctors on the TV, on the newspaper, that everybody should exercise, right? And you hear it on a daily basis. There's a good reason for it, because it really does have a lot of benefits, health-wise, emotional benefits, and cognitive benefits. Now, I tried to list, and if you see, there's a lot of them here. Um, and I kind of ran out of room, and I decided I didn't want to use another slide. But look at what they can do. May improve somebody's overall health. Do you agree? Okay, may help delay or prevent some diseases or disabilities. And they're talking about things like diabetes, colon cancer, strokes, heart disease. I will tell you that to me, and I always, when I think about this, is many, many years ago, um, I knew someone who was 38 years old, and they were diagnosed with juvenile diabetes. And you would think that it would be more of a type 2 diabetes, because they're, you know, almost 40 years old. What seemed to have delayed that progression of the disease was he was an avid runner. He ran all the time. So again, you kind of see more and more examples of how this can be really, really important. May speed recovery. If somebody has to go into an operation, if they are physically fit, uh, probably recovering much better. May help improve sleep. One of the things that when you list, you know, in terms of how can you get a better sleep, and many, many Americans have problems with sleep. Anybody here have problems with sleep? OK, so there's problems with sleep. One of the things, have you heard that uh, exercise helps? OK. One, but do remember, you don't want to exercise right before you go to sleep. Now, the next two may reduce wandering and may reduce agitated behavior. Those are kind of things that I was thinking about in terms of for somebody who does have some memory challenges and have been diagnosed with, some, with Alzheimer's disease. A lot of times you will find that really in terms of they also need exercise and it really does help with some of the wandering and agitated behavior. So those are um, you know, some of the things that we can see. Now let's look at this. It may improve mood and relieve stress. Okay. Think about it. 
may improve your mood, like get in positive mood, um, you feel better, you're feeling more positive and really relieving stress. And this, I think, when I look at that, is as important as it is for care, uh, people, who are, people who themselves need the care, I think it's also important for care partners. Because if you want to do the role that you have to do, you really need in terms of try to really have to try to increase your mood and relieve some of the stress of caregiving. It may increase a sense of well-being and accomplishment. Now, looking at also in terms of are there cognitive benefits as well? Well, many studies have shown that especially aerobic exercises do lead to improvements in memory, attention, processing speed, and do have a decrease in cognitive decline. Doesn't happen all the time, but again, many, many studies are starting to show this. So that is really important. Um, in terms of when you're looking at exercise, the first thing to do is embrace it. If you don't like doing it, are you gonna do it? No, okay, you're not gonna do it. So you better find something that you really do enjoy. And it's always fun to do with somebody else, fun to do with a partner. Why? Because if you think, okay, I'm going to go exercise, and you're doing it alone, well, I'll do it tomorrow. You know what? Uh, no, I'll do it later, and you don't do it. But if you know somebody is depending on you, then you're more likely that you're going to say, okay, I'm getting up and doing it, and then you really enjoy it. Always talk first with a physician, and you want to start slowly and work up. You don't want to get burned out, and you don't want to damage anything. So that's why those things are really important. The types of exercise and physical activity usually fall into four different categories. Endurance, which would be the aerobics, the swimming, the dancing, the running, the bicycling, gardening. Um, strength exercise would be in terms of when you're thinking of your resistant training, the weight training. Uh, balance, balance for falls. Falls are not a good thing to have. Okay, especially as people age. You don't want to be falls. And what you can do is you can incorporate some of these strength and balance exercises together. Uh, for example, let's say like one of the strength exercises I heard was really kind of standing like in terms of, you know, like on your toes. Anybody hear of that before? Okay. And what you can do to make it in terms of a balance is you can start out by holding both hands. Then you can hold in terms of one hand. Then you hold one finger, okay? And now, I don't know if I can do this, guys, with heels. And then you can, you know, in terms of no, no hands. Okay, that makes it into both doing the same exercise. And then the whole stretching, okay? Home activities, okay. Participation in home activities can really instill a feeling of feeling useful, bring opportunities to talk, to laugh, to uh, exercise, to utilize visual and motor skills, to stay occupied, to stir memories, and to feel connected. Sounds like it's pretty complete. But what are home activities? You want to look around inside and outside your home to come up with what you might have previously defined as chores and tasks, but can now be redefined as meaningful activities. So think about it. Things that you thought were just kinds of tasks that you have to do, they can really provide some meaning um, to both of you. And I think one of the things that when I think of home activities, I really think that everybody wants to feel useful. You want to feel needed, even if you have memory decline. So how do you do this? I've listed some home activities right here in terms of baking cookies. Now, if somebody can't bake cookies to, you know, by themselves, obviously, and we're trying to do things together, then maybe one person can have pour things in a bowl or do some of the stirring or hand you, let's say, like a utensil. Again, remember, it's more the process than the outcome. Cooking together, having somebody w washing fruits and vegetables, setting the table. And again, when you're thinking about setting the table, even if the table is not set right, is that important? No, because it's the process. 
eating together. And I think when I'm thinking about eating together and being that as a home activity, I'm thinking that it's like when you're trying to connect with another person. So you're not going to have, you know, in terms of on your phone, kind of checking your messages. You're not going to wait in terms of trying to answer the phone. You're not going to try to run up and do the laundry in between. You really want to do that quality time together. Reading the newspaper. You know, reading the newspaper and drinking coffee. Now, let's say you, um, someone who has, you know, some memory decline, they can't read anymore. So how could you be reading the newspaper together? You could be reading the newspaper. They could still be holding the newspaper, and you could try to have some either discussion or just say, hey, isn't this interesting that, and take it from there. Sorting objects. A lot of times, you know, you always have things that people who maybe are a little bit more high functioning can do. But I think that you also want to see, kind of generalize and see, is there somebody who might have some severe dementia? What can they do to be helpful? They can either try to sort buttons. You can give them maybe different colored towels and say, put the white towels here and the red towels here or the colored towels. Things that somebody can do. Petting a cat or dog. Now, the reason I didn't put there in home activities of feeding a cat and dog is because I have learned from past example, because sometimes people who do have some memory decline continue to feed that cat and dog. Okay? Does that sound familiar? So maybe another twist to it is just you go to out of the room and say, listen, you know, would you please take care of, you know, the dog or take care, you know, of the cat and just hold it and make sure that they're okay. Again, somebody feels that they're doing something worthwhile, okay, but not necessarily um, hurting the dog or animal, making them, you know, obese. Helping fold laundry making the bed, sweeping, vacuuming, dusting, a lot of things, polishing. If you notice, a lot of these things have to do with tactile, okay? And I think that that's one of the things that we forget in terms of as a sense. But as somebody um, loses some of their other functioning, it can be a very powerful sense. Putting postage stamps on envelopes, what do I mean? Well, you might be paying the bills. Um, although most people don't pay the bills anymore by sending them in. But if you're doing or writing cards to people, so what you can have somebody who does have some memory changes, they can put the stamps on so they feel that they're being a part of it. Uh, cleaning the windows and shining shoes. How about some outside home activities? Sweeping the patio, washing outside windows, filling a bird bath. Do you like the bird there? Isn't that cute? And bird watching blowing bubbles, working in a yard or garden, flying a kite, taking a walk, just taking a walk together. I would not necessarily do it in the middle of the summer in Las Vegas, but fall is a really nice time. Uh, playing a game of horseshoes, um, having a um, impromptu picnic, okay? So you go in the backyard and have a picnic together. And then swimming, because a lot of people, even though people have changes in their cognitive functioning, it doesn't mean that they can't go swimming. And here in, down here in Nevada, southern Nevada, I think that that can be very worthwhile. I like the picture. It's moving along, isn't it? Okay. How about um, community activities? Going places with a person who has memory cha uh, changes helps someone really feel a part of the community. Okay, and I think that that is really, really true. However, it is really important to be alert that unfamiliar places, too many people, and some cognitive decline needs to be considered when planning a specific outing. I think that's really important, and you really need to kind of go back to this more than once. All right? So what you have to do is balance. Is it going to be good or bad? Is going out with someone going to be very enjoyable for both of you? Or is it going to be too overwhelming for someone who does have a memory change um, and they're going to become frustrated and irritable? Or for yourself as a care partner, is it going to be overwhelming? And again, you know, in terms of frustrating. If you're answering yes, that it's going to be frustrating to both of you, do you think it's good to go on a, this community outing? No. You'll have to you can substitute it with something else. 
But if you can say that maybe if there's things that we can do that will be enjoyable to try it. Some suggested community activities would be appreciate nature. Okay, take nature walks, um, feed the birds, things like going to spring preserve, watching fish in a fish tank. Has any ever been to the Silverton where they feed the fish? Okay, so what you can do is you can feed the fish there. Some of the casinos really in terms of have like aquariums in the back. These could be something that could be really very, very enjoyable. Um, I would not though think about going to the Bellagio for their gardens, which are beautiful and I like their, you know, in terms of the scenery at let's say like um, midday on a Saturday, okay? because you're just crammed in people. If you want to do it, maybe try Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. I know that's getting up early, but what you're doing is you're thinking about how you can adapt something that people can do. Uh, go for a drive, uh, lots of drives. I know that people have driven up to Mount Charleston, to around Red Rock, really nice. Enjoy a farmer's market. There's a lot of uh, farmer's markets around. Just sit, sit together on a park bench. Visit a library or museum, walk in the mall, okay? Meet with family and friends. Um, watch a grandchild's either soccer game, baseball game, basketball game, and especially if somebody themselves play that sport. They can really identify, and it can be something that can be very enjoyable, and it's a lot low key. You can also go and attend some kind of professional sporting event. Uh, religious services and clubs. A lot of times the whole spirituality is really, really important. Even if someone does have some memory decline, they really feel very, very connected to their faith. So what you can do is try to participate in religious services. Um, sisterhood, men's club, maybe some of the Bible studies. I know many times people will um, sing in the choir, okay? Because again, that could be a long-term memory and you could remember some of the psalms and things. And visit an ice cream parlor or restaurant, okay? Again, going a little bit um, off times, but you know, food is very enjoyable. Now, okay, we're kind of speeding through this and this is kind of like one of my favorite parts is the whole reminiscing. So, um, reminiscing, I think is really just trying to, it's a re recollection of some of the memories, okay? Not necessarily maybe some of the true things that happened, but how someone remembers it. It does stimulate memory, and especially the long-term memory. It's enjoyable. It decreases boredom. It becomes an activity for you to do together. It encourages socialization. And one of the things, when you think of socialization is communication. A lot of times people who, who do have some memory difficulties, they really do have trouble with uh, communication. So here you're giving people the opportunity to really try to converse with each other. I like this one. Helps one appreciate accomplishments. Sometimes you don't really think about what you accomplished. Okay? You just, it, you know, you just kind of let it go and it's just don't, no big deal. And I think it's something that's really important. I will tell you when I was talking about reminiscing, and this was with my mother, and all of a sudden, I never knew this about her, she was telling me that she was taking this state test in New York, okay? Okay, thank you. She got the number one score. I never knew that, okay? She never talked about it, but all of a sudden it kind of comes out and it's like she's feeling really proud of something that she had, might have had not thought about for 50 years or 60 years, or maybe 70 years, okay? But the point is, do you see that? You, you think about things. Um, it does increase a feeling of closeness between each of you. And again, it captures a legacy and important memories for future generations. So, people here, your children, might not appreciate some of the things that you have done. But maybe, and I know it's sometimes harder to think about it, but maybe your grandchildren do. Think about all in terms of the family trees and um, in terms of people looking at their family history. So again, it can be something that can be very, very beneficial. How to do it. You want to talk about anything and everything. 
Um, you know, nothing is kind of like off key. It might turn out to you're talking about one thing and then it leads to something else and that's okay. You can have prepared questions, but really be flexible where it's taking you. Listen attentively, and that again is something where you want to have that eye contact, okay? You don't want to be doing anything else, but you really want to be looking directly at somebody and really maybe focusing and saying, I really care about what you're saying. Don't hurry, okay? Because I think that what you want to do, again, if anything else, you want to make this an enjoyable activity. If it doesn't finish today, you can always do it tomorrow. Interact and share your own experience. So if somebody's telling you something, then you can kind of come back and share your own. Again, hardest thing, not necessarily a test of memory or specific facts. So when you're reminiscing with someone and you're saying, I, I know, that didn't happen. Where are they coming from? That isn't true. It doesn't matter because what you're doing is you're looking at the process. What are ways to remember? You want to always use your five senses. Auditory, visual, olfactory, taste, and touch. And the more senses you use, the more effective it can be. Various ways to reminisce include music, which we kind of discussed a little bit before. Pictures, OK? Looking at family pictures, looking at books. Has anybody ever heard of the magazine Reminisce? OK, you've heard of it? It's a good magazine, right? because it kind of looks in in terms of past decades and shows and really talks about those things, which becomes a very, very useful tool when you're trying to, in terms of reminisce. Touch. Touching in terms of feeling like blankets, okay? Feeling stuffed animals. Um, you know, a lot of times, again, this can be something really important. Maps. I brought a map here. And I'm going to hold it up, I think, if I'm going to do it this. This is a world map. But you can use either like a US map as well. OK? And what you might do is use this map, put it on the wall, and as an activity, or put it on the table, have people kind of you know, really show, let's say, where they were born. OK? Maybe where they lived, where they vacationed, OK? Um, Maybe places that they want to go to. So what you're going to do is you're going to make this into an activity and several activities throughout the process, just using a simple map. Foods. When you're looking at um, reminiscing with foods, OK, that looks like an apple pie, right? Maybe an apple pie. When you think of apple pie, does it remind you of anything? Maybe some, sometimes, you know, in terms of when you're having apple pie, sometimes I think of, you know, oh, I do think of Thanksgiving because even though we have pumpkin pie at Thanksgiving, and then you think of the smells of it, and then you think of maybe some of the family dinners, and maybe it was Aunt Jane who made the best apple pie in the world, and I've never had her recipe before. So it can really lead to a lot of different things. Movie and television figure, who is that? Elvis? OK. What do you remember about Elvis? OK. Yeah? Jailhouse Rock. What else do you remember about Elvis? Anything? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, swinging the hips like that. OK. But you know, in terms of so you can kind of, again, reminisce about different things in different movies and you know, in terms of television. And fashion. Does anybody know what that is when I put that in? It's a poodle skirt, OK, from the 1950s, OK? But again, fashion. But I want to tell you, when it comes to fashion, um, and anybody who has seen me do this presentation before, I always wear this dress, OK? And why do I wear this dress? This dress was my grandmother's dress. She, w she died in 1985. She had it 10 years before, so it is now 40 years old. But when I wear this dress, it makes me think about my grandmother, who was this petite, lively woman who was into everything. And so what you do is, you know, think about it. It brings back a lot of really very, very positive memories to my mind. Okay? So that's where kind of fashion could come in in clothing. Common re uh, reminiscing topics, childhood. You can talk about some childhood friends, childhood pets, um, where somebody grew up, adulthood, looking at maybe people's jobs, 
um, again, in terms of you know, what they were doing, where they lived, uh, vacations people had, favorite vacations, favorite jobs, or maybe unfavorite jobs, OK? Family, immediate and extended. And the holidays. Um, I have the flag there. Why do I have the flag there? Because the flag reminds me of a holiday, 4th of July. Why is that so important to me? It's not just the 4th of July. It was my father's birthday on the 4th of July. So now that all of a sudden that reminiscing is not only a holiday, it's bringing back in terms of a family member. Friends, hobbies, and sports. Does anybody know? Any, we have, do we have any avid sports baseball fans right there? What was that? Did anybody, anybody know? OK, it was a World Series. Did, 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 uh, did you know what World Series? Is that the Mets? No, it's the Minnesota Twins, OK? <laughs> Got to have the Minnesota Twins. It was in 1987, and it was a World Series with Minnesota Twins and St. Louis. All right. But again, think about it. Many men, and I'm not, tr you know, in terms of buying sexes, really are very, um, sports have been very important throughout their life. So this is why you want to maybe incorporate that. Now, before, oh, that was my shiny dog. So in terms of, I, that's why I wanted to kind of bring my slides versus others. And again, when I'm thinking of this picture, bringing back a lot of memories. Now, before stopping, okay, I want to share with you something that I really think it can be a very, very enjoyable activity, and I have just a few minutes before questions. This is, to me, is a really good website that I use when I reminisce. It is called dmaria.com. And what it is, is you put, you kind of type in a date, okay? So what I did is I put on this date in history. So this was September 9th, and I went back 50 years. All older than many, some of you are here, but some of you might have been there 50 years ago. And I kind of want to share with you um, what happened 50 years ago. On September 9th, Sandy Colfax, anybody heard of Sandy Colfax? Okay. He pitched his fourth no-hitter, a perfect game versus the Cubs. Also on September 9th, Tibet became autonomous from China. Did you guys know that? No. Um, what were some top songs in 65? Okay. Do you want to hear? Okay. Um, and some of them, you know, are still in existence. There are two songs from the Beatles, Help and Yesterday. Anybody remember those songs? Okay, what about in terms of I Got You Babe by? Sonny and Cher, right. Um, how about um, anybody ever hear of Downtown? Yes. By T yes, by Petulia Clark. That was in '65. Herman's Herbits, Mrs. Brown. You have a lovely daughter. Mm -hmm. So again, you could kind of type it in. Let me share with you what also happened in '65. How much do you think bread was? You're close. Twenty-one cents. Okay. What about milk? Now a dollar five. Eggs have gone up in price, right? But in 1965, they were a dollar a dozen. Now, this is what I like even better. You know how much gas was in 65? 31 cents. But a car, the average car, was only $2,000. And now, if anybody here is into, into the stock exchange, the Dow average at that time, 969. Okay, you can look at who was president, Lyndon Johnson. Uh, Hubert Humphrey was uh, vice president. Now, this is, I think, interesting. The Academy Award winners during that time was The Sound of Music for the best picture. Um, and TV, okay, I watch a lot of TV, I have to admit it. Do you know what some programs were and some of them are still there that you can kind of tune to so that you can use in terms of for your loved one? I'm going to read them off. The Adams Family, okay, remember that? Gilligan's Island, Lost in Space, Hogan's Heroes, I Dream of Jeannie, Green Acres, The Man from Uncle, Get Smart, the Fugitive and Bewitched. 
Did you know that was 65? Now, this is, I thought, really interesting to me, is new toys that were in 65, new toys. And some of them are still popular 50 years later, I think. Um, do any of you who have young children, have any of you, they play with G.I. Joe? Okay, that was in 65. Um, I've seen this on TV, the game operation. Okay, and what about Battleship? Okay, that, think about it, 50 years old, and they're still playing it. And then I always like to include the top books in 65. Um, one of them was In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. And how about the autograph of Malcolm X? Okay, that was in 65. So with that ending, um, I hope that you have had fun here together, but maybe what you can do is kind of incorporate some of these things, pick up some things, and maybe try to have fun um, with you and the person who you are caring for. Thank you so much. Okay. Shall I ahead. Thank you. This, the, what I just said here? Yes. Okay, if anybody is interested, it is uh, D M A R I E dot com. And then when you get there, you're going to look under time capsule and you're going to look under inspiration. And you can put in any date. And I will tell you, this could be something like even for a birthday present for somebody. What you can do is you can kind of frame this, put in whatever you want. And what I've done, again, in terms of creativity, when it asks here the top headlines, I would say, um, you know, let's say like Donna was born. Okay, so you can kind of put that in and then make it into like a very personal gift. All right? All right, I want to thank everybody so much. Um, any other questions? Yes, ma'am. I have a question, just a comment. There's this thing called Me TV, which has all those programs on it. It's available on regular TV. And also, some of these things I have found are as beneficial, if not more so, for the caregiver than a person that you take you know, the okay. rest of the same part. Do you remember the better times? Right, you know, and I think that it, it's right. It's for, it's, but it's for both, okay? It's for both. It, you know, you help the better times as somebody who's a care partner, but at the same time, it can really, you don't know. Sometimes people who do have some dementia, they might not be able to express themselves, but it doesn't mean that maybe they still are really understanding and thinking about certain things, but maybe some of their thoughts can't get out too. Again just all depending. So I think it can be beneficial for both, um, but that's a very good point. Any other questions? Do we have any questions? Who's listening on? Off-site. Is there any? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.